Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ruby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing another video as part of my retro season review videos. I recently did the Illawarra Steelers 1992 season review. Tonight I'm going to be doing South Sydney Rabbitohs 2007 NRL season. 2007 was a big year in South Sydney's history. They were coached by Jason Taylor. The captains were Peter Cusack and Roy Asatazi. The biggest home crowd they got for the year was 34,315 against Canterbury in round four. The average home crowd for the year was just under 16,000. Joe Williams was the top point scorer with 88 points and Nathan Merritt were the top try scorer with 10 tries. The club finished in seventh place on the table at the end of the regular season. Now in the build up to the 2007 NRL season, South Sydney's time in the NRL hadn't been very successful at all. After the highly publicised court case, after they were thrown out of the NRL and then readmitted, the club would have finished last in 2002 if not for the Canterbury salary cap scandal. They then finished with the wooden spoon in 2003 and 2004. They narrowly avoided the wooden spoon in 2005, but in 2006 they finished dead last again. However, the club would change significantly halfway through the 2006 NRL season with Russell Crowe and Peter Holmes Accart securing private investment of the club and transferring ownership to themselves. Before the 2007 NRL season began, the club recruited some high profile players such as Roy Asatazi, David Kidwell, Nigel Wagner and Dean Widders. Also, there were some players that would go on to be club legends such as Isaac Luke making their debuts in the 2007 NRL season. In February of that year, David Kidwell and Peter Cusack were named as co-captains of the club. However, Roy Asatazi would take over as co-captain, replacing Kidwell after Kidwell suffered a freak accident at home when he tripped over his younger daughter and injured his knee which ruled him out for the season. South Sydney would start the season with a narrow 16 points to 14 loss against St George in the Charity Shield. However, in the season proper, they had one of their best starts to a season in several years when they recorded three victories in a row. In round one, they defeated arch rival Sydney Roosters 18 points to six. They then easily accounted for Parramatta 31 points to six, and they also defeated Cronulla 26 points to 16. Although the club would slump back down the table following the first three rounds, having only recorded one victory in six matches, in some of those games they were only narrow losses, such as in round eight they lost eight points to four against Brisbane, in round seven they lost 18 points to 16 against New Zealand, and in round nine they only lost 16 points to 10 against Canberra. Halfway through the season, South Sydney was sat in ninth place on the table, just one place outside the finals positions. In June, David Peachy announced that he would be retiring at the end of the season. In the same month, it were also announced that Craig Wing, who had to depart South Sydney after they were removed from the competition at the end of 1999, had signed a four-year deal to return to South in 2008, which sparked a lot of controversy as he'd been playing for Sydney Roosters for several seasons beforehand. In August, a six-part Fly on the Wall documentary series called South Side Story aired on the ABC for the first time. In the second half of the year, things improved for the South Sydney club on the field, with South recording victories over Penrith, Cronulla, Newcastle, North Queensland and the Gold Coast to sit in eighth place on the table and they were looking at qualifying for the finals realistically for the first time in 18 years. After being brought back down to earth in round 21 against Penrith where they lost 32 points to 16, the club would then record three victories in a row, defeating St George, Manly and easily accounting for the West Tigers, 37 points to 12 at Leichhardt Oval. In the final round of the regular season, the club would lose 26 points to 12 against arch rivals Eastern Suburbs, but it didn't matter, South Sydney had finished in 7th place. This game was also remembered for David Farlongo punching Braith and Astor in the face for no reason and later being suspended for I think 7 matches 
and also Jerry, Jeremy Smith got involved for, in the fight and I believe that he was suspended as well. So after 18 seasons of missing out on the finals and with the last time that they made the finals in 1989 when they won the minor premiership, South Sydney were finally back in the first week of September. In the first week of the finals, which were the qualifying final, South Sydney's opponents were Manly Warringah at Brookvale Oval. In those days, it were a McIntyre system, so Manly, who'd finished in second place, had to play South, who finished in seventh. South Sydney were not expected to win this match, but at half time, they put in a valiant showing, only being down six points to two on the scoreboard. However, in the second half, Manly ran away with it winning 30 points to 6, which ended South Sydney's season. At the end of season awards, new recruit Roy Asatazi picked up most of the honours, winning the George Piggins medal as South Sydney's best player, the Jack Greeners Players Award, and also the Supporters' Choice Award. In September, it was also announced that they would be playing an exhibition game against Leeds in Jacksonville, Florida in 2008 the centenary year of the South Sydney Rugby League Club. Although South Sydney's season ended in the first week of the finals, this season kind of acted as a springboard for the club over the following years. The club recruited more high-profile players. By 2012 and 2013, the club were serious premiership contenders. And in 2014, they ended up winning their first premiership in 43 year where they defeated Canary Bankstown. All in all, it were a good year for South because they made the finals for the first time in 18 year. Things were looking good on the field and off the field. The club announced for the first time that they'd recorded more than 10,000 members. And as I said, in years gone by, there'd been easy beats, wooden spooners. And in 2007, they were a competitive outfit. Even the lower grades at South Sydney had a good season in 2007. North Sydney, who were the feeder club to South at the turn, also made their respective grand final in the New South Wales Cup, and they only lost the match in the final seconds when Parramatta scored a try right in the full time siren to deny North Sydney the New South Wales Cup Premiership. So that concludes my review of South Sydney's 2007 NRL season. Let me know your memories from this season and what games you do remember. It's funny looking back at this season because South Sydney hadn't made the finals for so long. I remember when they actually made the finals, everyone was kind of praising them, going, well done, good for you. We finally made the finals. This is exciting. Um, everyone was showing highlight reels of, of olden days when South were a really successful team. And now it's kind of like expected that the club makes the finals every year, but back then that weren't the case. So anyways, this has been Rugby League History. Thanks for tuning in for this video. Thanks to everyone that's been watching my recent videos and following me on Instagram and Facebook. I've been posting a lot on there lately. But anyways, I'll catch you all later in the next video. Tatty bye for now.